Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another review from Fanboys Forever. Today we're going to be starting our very first look at a figure from the new Origins Snake Men wave. Now of course this is what Mattel is kind of switching over to for the first part of 2023. Thankfully those figures have shown up a little bit early at places like Big Bad Toy Store where I secured this wave. They have done a few things to differentiate the packaging. You can see right away that the biggest change is the addition of the snake men head at the top there with the cool artwork of the two snakes and the scales, which is pretty awesome. A little bit lower on the car, you'll also see that they've added a faction sticker for snake men. Now it's kind of funny because He-Man is um, not a member of the Snake Men, as you may already know, but I suppose it was important to brand the packaging like that so that it matched the top of the card. Something that some folks have been pointing out online are the cool snake scales over here on the sides of the bubble, which kind of really brings the whole aesthetic home. On the back of the packaging, you can see the Rise of the Snake Men branding going on, as well as a cross sell with some cool artwork of the other figures in the wave. And by now, in a surprise to no one, we have some incredible artwork on the back of the packaging showing Snake Armor He-Man fighting not only Snake Face, but also Squeeze. You may also notice that this is the bilingual version of the packaging, which is what Big Bad Toy Store offered first. And frankly, it's fine with me. Snake Armor He-Man has always been an incredibly special version of the character for me. Let's go ahead and get him out of the packaging. And as we all know by now, you will get a little guide as to what pieces you can actually remove and which should stay put. And of course, he comes with a mini comic. Now, since this is the international version that I got, there's actually no text inside of here, which is actually pretty smart, uh, seeing as how they can just pack in the exact same print. Uh, for all these different countries that speak all sorts of different languages. So that way they don't have to worry about having multiple translations on one page. It would be kind of a nightmare, I'm sure. Uh, however, without spoiling the comic for you, even without the words, it's to me, it's actually nice just to get the art without the word bubbles all over it. And this is some really nice art. If you don't believe me, check this image out right here. I would actually like a poster of this. And here he is, the most powerful man in the universe, outfitted to fight those dastardly, wascally snake men. And you can see there's just so much cool stuff going on here in terms of sculpting, in terms of being true to that original figure. Let's get into just a very brief explanation of where this even comes from. First of all, it's very important to note this is not a brand new concept or anything like that. It's not something newly created. Uh, for the refresh of season two of the 2000X He-Man series back in, I believe, 2003, they decided that they would rebrand the show as He-Man versus the Snake Men, and they would also give He-Man a brand new standard armor that he would call on. It turned out that because King Grayskull had fought the Snake Men long ago using the Power Sword, he had developed a special suit of armor that could withstand the Snake Men's venom. And so He-Man is able to tap into the ancestry of the sword and recall King Grayskull's old armor. So I am very, very fond of this concept. I remember that it kind of re-energized my interest in the 2000X series as a young teenager because I thought the design of the armor was just completely awesome. It made it even worse when the figure for this in 2000X uh, did not come out in America. It came out in Europe. And there was also like a 12 inch version. I'm not sure if that one saw release stateside, but either way, it was always great to get this because it acknowledges something that I honestly didn't think would be acknowledged in something like Origins. And I'd be curious about what the designers, the Four Horsemen, would actually think about this figure and some of the liberties that it does take. There are a few and uh, some of the things that they did to kind of make this work in a more retro style. First of all, it's important that we understand this figure does not exist in a vacuum necessarily because a few months ago, we of course had the release of the 2000X standard He-Man. It's a little bit of a cheat that I'm showing you this version over here because this is the one that came in the He-Man TV four pack. And uh, I don't have the regular version yet because I'm trying to, I'm sort of struggling with like what the point of it is because this is a better version but you can definitely see that they have at least the same head and a few shared parts. This is honestly a lot of brand new sculpting. This might as well have been a completely brand new character in some ways, sculpting wise. When it comes to details, the sculpt is there. Every single thing that you remember from the original appearance in the cartoon, from that original Four Horsemen figure, all of those elements are here. None of them have been cut back 
everything on the sculpt, including things like the little snake man symbol right there that shows it's kind of against symbol, like a strike through with a power sword, which I always thought was a funny little bit. Things like the back of the armor, uh, the new boots. You even have things like the uh, kind of loincloth piece that they created to get around He-Man being in a uh, furry underwear piece. And that was something apparently that they were trying to do at the time because that wasn't going over with uh, kids in the 2000s. <laughs> Everything is there. All the little bits, all the little pieces, the belt buckle, especially the new gauntlet. The one thing that it doesn't have, which I'm sure you can see already, is a lot of the paint hits that made those things stand out. And it's not difficult to tell where these paint applications would have gone. You can, of course, see that over here, He-Man's uh, bandolier around his chest should have been painted. And the little sections right there, the little squares should have been painted. Things more simple like He-Man's belt buckle here definitely should have been painted red. And uh, the symbol on his shoulder pad should have been painted as well. There's just lots of different little things like that. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts, I think. I don't necessarily care that much because I understand that they are working in kind of a mass market line here and uh, it's a definitely a different era than we had all that time ago and uh, of course with a rising cost it's a it's probably just good that this figure even came out to whatever it is now 16.99 because origins figures are going up a little i think there is enough here and i definitely think that they did what they were supposed to in terms of the most important paint applications if you want to see a good example of premium deco for this figure then uh, we'll look at a version later that i think will show you all the missing paint applications but I do want to point something out, and it's that in the mini comic that's included, if you notice, He-Man actually does not have any of those color hits either. They were actually quite careful to make sure they weren't literally painting themselves into a corner with details on He-Man's armor because they couldn't afford the paint applications or wouldn't cost out or whatever. And they even did that with the artwork on the back of the packaging. So all those things that are now silver uh, in the artwork, that is all reflected. It's almost a shame that this wasn't the version that was in the TV four pack because it honestly, it could have benefited from better paint applications a lot more than the standard 2000X version, which mostly already had most of it painted anyway. All right, so um, usually I don't go into too much detail about articulation, but I will do a little bit here because there are so many new sculpted pieces. I do think it's important that we understand uh, how they function. You already know everything about how an arm like this functions in Origins, and nothing about it is inhibited here or any different than usual. Uh, of course, we do have a waist cut, and of course, all the pieces being modular, you can kind of customize and do what you need to all day long with this thing. If you want to, you can even take this right off and He-Man can go back to having the furry underwear. So if that's something you need, go for it. But just know that none of this is painted with his 2000X belt right there. What is cool is that this becomes kind of a floating piece that you can use in other situations. As for articulation with so many of these new pieces, I think one of the biggest curiosities is the shoulder here. Almost exactly like it was handled in the uh, classics figure it's attached almost exactly the same. So you can see that it's just on there with a the little tab. As you move the arm up, this is about as good as you can get, which I actually think is pretty decent. You can even go further if you want to. You just have to bring the arm out and this will flex. So that is nice that he has such a wide range and it's not a really static, hard plastic piece. You can also see that he is able to go out quite a ways right there. Of course, he does have cuts at the bicep as always. And this gauntlet piece is removable as well. You would just have to pop off the hand and it would come right out. Down here, the loincloth piece doesn't really inhibit articulation too much compared to what you would usually get from Origins. We know that they're not very high kickers a lot of the time. So you can see that, you know, that's probably about what you're going to get right there. Of course, if you want the wide stances, ankle rocker pivot is available so that you can hit those stances very easily. Now, looking at his gauntlet that I referenced earlier, this is, of course, what man uses to kind of clamp down uh, snake heads, I guess, and kind of hold them back so that they don't burn him up with their acidic venom. This actually comes right out. So this is kind of a feature that's very similar to the classics version of the figure, which we'll look at in a moment. And it just leaves the gauntlet open because in the cartoon, uh, basically it would just launch out of it. 
and it would actually grow very large sometimes depending on the need of the scene, I guess. Now, one interesting thing is that if you look, He-Man's regular bare chest is actually under this, so this is actually kind of a rubber overlay. An interesting little source of bizarrity is on the interior of the armor, there appears to be some kind of brown paint or something that got on it at the factory, which can probably be acetone right off, but still interesting that it's there. Uh, maybe it's some battle damage, that's what we'll say. Of course, something that I always adore doing with these Origins figures is every time there's some kind of He-Man variant, particularly one that was not in the original 80s line, I love to pop on that original 80s He-Man head and kind of just get a little taste of what it might have been like if something like this had actually come out in the 80s. And it actually looks quite a bit better than I would think it has any right to, so that's pretty cool. And just because we now can, here he is with the CGI Netflix head. And of course, I think the one most people wanted to see, Owen Wilson. I, I don't know. A surprisingly great looking head switch is the New Adventures head that came in the TV four pack. So I actually think this is terrific looking with the ponytail. And by far the most natural fit, me as Snake Armor He-Man. <laughs> Believe it or not, this actually does peg right in. And somewhere in an alternate reality where the Filmation series continued, Lou Scheimer just got off the phone with Mattel. The year is 2002, and he is so angry that they've demanded that he man's costume change. Speaking of modularity, since you can take the arms right off, you can actually slip the chest piece uh, right out of this, and you can use this as armor for any other Origins figure. And thanks to Mattel's insane insistence upon their incredible modularity between lines, I have concocted a mix of three different Mattel toy lines that all snap together to give you kind of sort of look at what it might look like for Mattel to do a King Grayskull figure in the snake armor. And don't forget to leave your angry comment down below. There's something about them that you don't like, but you're just not sure what it is. Mm-hmm. I know what's up. In terms of accessories, you've already seen everything that the Seaman has to offer, from the detachable snake claw right here, to his power sword that was simply reused from the 2000X version. I think the big accessory here, honestly, is his armor, if you could kind of count it as that, but that's really where most of the money went for this figure. If they could have given us anything else, I really think that I would have liked a power sword that actually opens. In the original 2000X version, uh, the power sword had this really cool gimmick where it would fly open and inside you would have this green energy that He-Man could use to kind of bash the snake men. And you can see a lot of that aesthetic repeated in the CGI series because He-Man's sword opens in a similar way. Uh, nothing like that was done here and as far as I can tell there wasn't any alteration to the power sword. I'm okay with that. Uh, it would have been nice if they had included He-Man's uh, snake armor shield. Overall, sure, there were some compromises to get this He-Man out to us, uh, especially to keep him at this price point with all the brand new sculpting and everything. But in the end, I really do think he is a really nice addition, and there's no better way to start our look at this initial Rise of the Snake Men wave than to, of course, look at the He-Man that it is all themed around. Now, believe it or not, I did used to own the original version of this guy from the 2000X toy line. Found him on eBay years and years ago. Um, of course, I went through kind of a time when I transitioned out of the 2000X line, so I ended up selling off a whole lot of those guys. However, it was during the Motu Classics line that I got a heck of a consolation prize with this incredible, extremely ornate version of Snake Armor He-Man. And I'll just be honest, this one absolutely mops the floor with this poor guy. It's not even close. From the insane number of paint hits that are on this figure to the crazy articulation that they still manage somehow with this guy, I mean, it's not even fair to put them side by side. Of course, the economy has changed and so has the value of money uh, since this time. This guy was right around the $25 to $30 mark. He was a part of a two-pack with the 2000X version of King Hiss. Although there's no real comparison in one way between the two, I think they're definitely going for something very different, but I'll always really be impressed by this guy and he'll always be one of my favorite He-Man figures that I own. Well friends, I certainly hope that you've enjoyed this look at the inaugural offering for the Rise of the Snake Men line that Mattel will be moving towards in 2023. 
It does give me a whole lot of vibes from when Mattel also changed the toy packaging for the 2000X series and added that green to the top of it. But unfortunately, it's kind of a negative connotation for me because I remember that being the end of that line. Well, it certainly doesn't appear to be here, and I certainly think that the line looks like it's in really good shape, and um, it appears that lots of people are still enjoying it. And so I have a lot more excitement than I do reservation. Let me know down below, do you think that some of the compromises that were made here are enough to kind of run you off from this figure, or is it one that you're definitely going to get? Had you ever even heard of Snake Armor He-Man before they revealed him in the Origins line? There's no shame in that if you hadn't. We learn about old concepts being brought back for new lines all the time. It's just a part of collecting. Either way, I certainly hope you've enjoyed today's review. Be sure to be on the lookout for many more Masters of the Universe videos. Of course, you're going to be seeing lots and lots and lots of reviews for Masters of the Universe, both Masterverse and Origins related, over the next several days, because it does seem that Mattel has suddenly shipped practically everything that they were working on for the holiday season to Big Bad Toy Store. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe, because those things really do help us out, and they mean the world to me here at Fanboys Forever. And as always, God bless you and yours, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out. <laughs>